Hi everyone, welcome to the Houston Zoo's Facebook Live featuring our meerkat mob today. I'm Haley and with me is another meerkat keeper, Priscilla. And of course we have our wonderful meerkat mob who is enjoying some holiday enrichment right now. So we have four meerkats in our mob. We have three females and one male. Our females are enjoying the enrichment while our male Capone is hanging out by me hoping I'll give him some of his favorite treats. So a meerkat's favorite treat, part of their diet here at the Houston Zoo, is going to be their bugs. We have crickets and mealworms today that we are feeding them. Um, they'll also get things like hornworms, silkworms, um, and anything that they can find out here on exhibit too. In the wild, they're kind of known to be opportunistic eaters, which means that they can, they'll eat about anything that they can find. Their favorite treat out in the wild is going to be scorpions. And one thing that's really awesome about meerkats is that they are highly resistant to the venom of scorpions and snakes. That means a scorpion that could sting me and do a lot of damage to me would not be able to do as much damage to a meerkat. It's pretty much gonna feel like a bee sting to, this, to these guys. They can still get pretty sick from um, scorpion or snake venom, but it's not going to affect them like it would affect a person. Another species that has that trait is a mongoose, which meerkats are related to. Meerkats um, are related to mongoose and civets. For anyone who doesn't know what a civet is, it's really hard to explain, but you should definitely do a Google on them. They're really cool animals. They include binturongs, genets, and leesangs. Um, so as I mentioned, we have three girls. Our girls are Kit, Dottie, and May. They are named after a league of their own. And then we have our male Capone, who is named after Al Capone because a group of meerkats is called a mob. In the meerkat mob, the females are going to be in charge. So we are going to have an alpha female, and she's the one who kind of runs the show. She's the one who will kind of lead the rest of the mob, and she will choose an alpha male, and together they will be a breeding pair. So they will be the ones to have all the pups. So in a meerkat litter, you're gonna have about three to four pups in a litter. It can be anywhere from one to six though. Uh, and they will have litters about three to four times a year. The pups will stay in the breeding burrows for about uh, three to four weeks before they come out. And then the um, alpha female will go and forage for food while she has babysitters, other meerkats that will stay behind and make sure that her pups are protected and taken care of. So meerkats are found in the Kalahari and Namib desert that is going to be in South Africa, Botswana, and Namibia. It's the only place that you can find meerkats, which is why it's so cool how you can visit the Houston Zoo and see them here. They're not found in very many places. Even though they are found in a desert, it is a vegetative desert, which means there are still plants and animals around. Um, some animals that meerkats might run into are going to be like your bat-eared foxes, occasionally a lion, maybe a leopard, some uh, jackals other mongoose they're going to find some reptiles as well and that kind of goes into their predators so a meerkat's biggest predator is a uh, is going to be birds of prey so uh, there can be anywhere in a meerkat mob there can be anywhere from two to however many individuals there can pretty much be um, i've seen about 30 or 50 meerkats are usually kind of the top numbers for meerkat mobs but it can vary so meerkat mobs can be two individuals because when you become alpha female, you have to fight for that position. So if, the, if a female loses out on being alpha female, she can be kicked out of the mob. Uh, she'll be by herself and she might run into a male who is not part of a mob and they will create a mob together and grow from those two individuals. When you have an established family, they can get into those higher numbers of 30 individuals. So Jake asked, do they like to play? That's a really good question. Meerkats love to play. And that is a great way for them to bond. That's how they get to um, kind of become more familiar and create closer connections to their meerkat mob members is by playing. It's also when they have an excess of energy that meerkats will play. And you'll see our meerkats playing on really beautiful days. Our girls love to wrestle. That is their favorite thing to do. Capone is 11 years old, so he's a little bit older. He sometimes joins in on playing, but he prefers to work. And by working, he does his favorite job of doing sentry duty. And that basically means he's on lookout. While our meerkats are safe from any predators that they would find out in the wild, 
like birds of prey or jackals or even some reptiles, Capone makes sure our females always know whenever there's an airplane that flies overhead. So Lindsay asks, is there a dominant female or male? So the female is gonna be dominant and she is known as the alpha female, but she will choose an alpha male. And her role is pretty much going to be to lead the mob. So when meerkats wake up in the morning, it's the alpha female's job to kind of direct them to where they're gonna to go to forage or look for food for the day. That's pretty much how a meerkat's gonna spend most of their time while they're awake is foraging or looking for food. And that's why we have this enrichment out here for them. So our meerkats are usually fed breakfast and dinner and then they get their um, mealworms or their crickets and enrichment or ways for them to forage and look for food. It's something that's exciting for our animals and something new for them to do and keeps them entertained as well. So as I mentioned before, Capone is about 11 years old and our girls are three years old. The girls are sisters. Um, and meerkats can live about 12 to 15 years in human care. So Daisy asks, how would you describe their personalities? Thank you for asking that question, Daisy. I only have 10 to 15 minutes to talk uh, or else I would probably be talking for an hour about them. But the basics is Kit is our most independent female that we have. She kind of likes to be by herself and she also loves to groom her sisters. Capone is the most hardworking meerkat, at least when it comes to sentry duty. He's always on the lookout. He's even kind of doing a little bit of lookout right now. Dottie is the most skeptical meerkat we have. She's a little bit suspicious of what we're doing, but as long as we have food, she trusts us. And May um, kind of shows the most signs of being a leader. She kind of keeps her sisters in line and she spends the most time digging and making sure their tunnels uh, are kind of cleanly and nice for them and neat. So Rachel asks, how can we save them in the wild? That's a really great question. So by visiting the Houston Zoo, that's a great way to save animals in the wild. Um, we have a lot of ways that we help to conserve many different species. Uh, one thing that can always affect meerkats is pretty much them losing their habitat through agriculture or things like that. And also a lot of time deserts can get some plastic waste as well. So reducing our plastic waste can help protect animals that are found in deserts because finding things that uh, we have at home like grocery bags and stuff like that aren't natural things that we would find out there. So one thing that's fun about meerkats is that they are pollinators. So um, in the wild, meerkats would run into the Kalahari sticky grass and that would get on their fur and then they would get seeds and pollen stuck to their fur and kind of distribute it across their territory. So Judith asks, are they endangered? Meerkats are not endangered, but their populations are still declining. Uh, meerkats are losing their habitat to uh, humans kind of gr uh, populations growing and um, agriculture growing as well. You might notice the stripes on the back of a meerkat. That is a defense mechanism. That is a way a meerkat can hide from a predator. So for the most part, if a meerkat thinks there's a predator in the area, so Dottie right over there is doing sentry duty. So she is gonna let everyone know if there's a predator nearby by making a barking noise. When she makes that barking noise, our meerkats will go run off into something called a bolt hole, which is holes they have around their territory to hide in. But if they don't have a chance to get to one of their bolt holes, meerkats will lay flat on the ground in a nice sploot and they will kind of blend into the dirt around them. Depending on where meerkats are found, it's gonna be their colors. Um, so you might visit other zoos or see other meerkats and they're gonna be a lighter, more silvery color. And that's based off the vegetation that's found in their, you know, in the Kalahari or Namib Desert. Um, our meerkats are a little darker in color. So they would be found someplace where the dirt and vegetation is going to be a little bit darker. So Rosie asks, do they have good hearing? They have excellent hearing because they have to look for predators. So meerkats, one thing that separates them from mongoose is they have a special valve in their ear that they can kind of turn or close off so that they don't get dirt into their ears. Um, but while they're digging, you'll notice that they'll stop digging, look, poke their heads up. What they'll do is they'll open that valve so that they can hear for any predators. But their biggest way to look for predators is going to be that eyesight. The way meerkats' eyes are positioned on their head, they're able to hunt. So it's kind of in the front, but also on the side. So they can look for predators and hunt for prey at the same time. They can also see directly above themselves if they need to. If they do hear a predator or see a predator, they will let out a barking call to make sure the rest of the bomb members are aware that a predator is in the area. 
As I mentioned before, it's going to be birds of prey are one of their biggest predators. Another one is going to be snakes or other reptiles that could go into their burrows. Tori asks, do they take turns being on watch? Yes, they do. So Dottie's kind of taking over right now. In our meerkat mob, Capone does the most watch. In a meerkat mob in the wild, you're going to have your older, more experienced males doing most of the sentry or watch duty. That is because um, your older meerkats are going to be able to find food a lot quicker, fill their bellies, and then make sure everyone else has a chance to forage or look for food. So meerkats, their um, burrows do help a lot of animals in the wild as well. They'll share their burrows with different species. They won't. Their burrows are so big that they won't run into those species, but bat-eared foxes, some reptiles, um, some mongoose, and some types of rats are going to live in meerkat burrows as well. They also will interact with leopard tortoises from time to time, especially the pups who are a bit more curious and playful. So meerkats rely on their sense of smell when they uh, look for food. They can detect insects up to five feet underground. So John asks, are they vocal? Meerkats are very vocal. Our meerkats are being pretty quiet right now, but usually feeding time, you, you'll hear a lot more growling. So they have over 30 different vocalizations, one of which means this is my food, this is not your food. Um, the pups will make noises that say, I'm hungry, please feed me. And meerkats will even take food away from one pup to give to another pup who's vocalizing even louder. And then of course they have their barking call when there is a predator in the area. They have a call that means I'm on watch duty and you can kind of let your guard down. They have a call that lets um, for grooming. So if a more submissive meerkat comes up to a more dominant meerkat, they'll make a soft vocalization to ask if, that, if they can groom um, the meerkat. Allo grooming is a way that meerkats can bond with each other. So Jackie asks, what type of enrichment do they like? So you're seeing pretty much one of their favorite types of enrichment, which is foraging or looking for food. Uh, other types of enrichment that we do for meerkats that they love is they love blankets that helps keep them warm, especially now that it's getting colder during the winter season. They also enjoy uh, different animal smells. So in this building in Natural Encounters, we have several different animal species and a lot of them are very stinky. So we'll take enrichment from one animal and give it to the meerkats and they'll be very interested in those different smells, especially for an animal like our tamandua which is a South American lesser anteater, and that is something they would not encounter in the wild, and it's a very new and exciting scent for them. You can also see that they have this dark eye mask going on. It pretty much works like sunglasses. So while a meerkat's doing sentry, kind of like Dottie's doing, um, it'll help reduce the glare. So Chris asks, do they uh, consistently move to a new location to live in or do they stay in the same spot? So meerkat's territory is going to be about 4 kilometers to 12 kilometers and that's going to include their sleeping burrows and um, the area that they forage. As long as there's an abundance of food, meerkats are going to keep pretty much that area to stay in. Um, if they are, don't have a lot of food or if there's a lot of predators in the area, then they will move. Meerkats can create their own burrowing system or sometimes they will move into previously abandoned um, burrows from other meerkat mobs. But for the most part, they stay in the same territory. That's also why our alpha female is so important. She works as basically as an archive for the meerkat mobs. She has learned from the previous alpha, her mom, and other meerkats about the territory, where to go, how to lead predators in the area, great places to forage, and things like that. Meerkats can move about um, one to two miles a day though to look for food and that's going to be based off weather and pretty much conditions about when they can find food. So to tell our meerkats apart, we spend a lot of time looking at them, but Capone right here, our older male, he has the most symmetrical features. That's kind of how we tell him apart. He's a little bit lighter than our girls too. He's seen a little bit more sun. Uh, we have Kit, who has a line, or this is May right now. She has a lot of pink in her nose. That's a good way to tell her apart. Um, Kit, who is another meerkat that we have, you'll notice a line going down her nose. And Dottie has a lot of white bridge on her nose. So that's how we tell our meerkats apart to make sure that we can correctly identify them. 
So meerkats have a special secondary eyelid called a nictitating membrane, and it basically allows meerkats to blink without kind of opening themselves up to uh, being so vulnerable to predators. So that nictitating membrane will protect their eyelids from things like chemical defenses from millipedes um, or dirt and dust while they're digging. So Janie asks, what's your favorite thing about working with them? My favorite thing about working with the meerkats is their big personalities. So meerkats pretty much, um, even though they work together as a mob and we view them as a mob, each meerkat has their own individual personality. They're pretty fun loving animals. They're very curious and they're very mischievous as well. They, <laughs> If there's anything new, they will go and explore it to see what is going on. We have to be careful though, because they do rely more on their sense of uh, smell than their eyesight. So sometimes they explore things by nipping at them. So Alice asks, are they friendly to humans? So our meerkats are pretty used to humans, but it's pretty much a working relationship. Um, it's not gonna be like a dog or cat where they're super excited to see us. They're mostly excited for food. When they see us, they know we might be giving them some tasty treats like those mealworms or crickets. Um, but for the most part, they kind of just view us as furniture in their enclosure. They might come up and smell us. They might kind of be like, what are you doing here? But they're not really gonna wanna like hang out with us or you know, they definitely do not wanna be touched. <laughs> So thanks for tuning in. Join us next week for Facebook Live at 11 a.m. on Wednesday.